Right. And we are now joined online by Marco Ziegler, CEO at Paul Farmer Group. Mr. Ziegler, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Do you hear yeah, me? Thank you so much. Okay. You are in Goldbeck, CEO at Goldbeck Solar. Thank you so much for this. And we are now joined online by Marco Ziegler, CEO at Paul Farmer Group. Good afternoon. Mr. Ziegler, good afternoon. Your Excellency Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, still ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon in to first, you. Do you hear me? Good afternoon. Do you hear me? Thank you so much. Okay. You are in Goldbeck, CEO at Goldbeck Solar. Thank you so much for this. And we are now joined online by Marco Ziegler, CEO at Paul Farmer. Mr. Ziegler, we seem yes. to... Good afternoon. Mr. Ziegler, good afternoon. Your Excellency Prime Minister, Deputy Prime well, Minister, Well, you know what, I think over gentlemen. the past year yeah, or so we have all been in this situation, right? Do you so hear let me? us fix it a little bit. It will just take okay. a second, you know, with everything that's been happening for more than a year and a half now, we've all been there. We've all been to those Zoom meetings when the connection is not perfect. So, Mr. Ziegler, we seem to... Good afternoon. Mr. Ziegler, good afternoon. Hello? Just give us a second here, please. I'm pleased to be part of you know, with everything that's been happening. Do you hear me? More than a year and a half now, we've all been there. We've all been to those Zoom meetings. Well, uh, I think we're going to go back to Mr. Ziga in a couple of minutes. I'm pleased to be part of the discussion at the Kazakhstan Global Investment Roundtable. As the Pharma Group has been continuously investing we're gonna go back to the Mr. of Kazakhstan. This year we have marked 10 years of performer investment program into Santo and please for the board and our manufacturing facility located in the city of Minken. Santo is now a leading Kazakhstan in Central Asian well, local pharmaceutical companies. Every third pack of medicines in national uh, Kazakhstan healthcare is supplied by Santo. Also, Santo has become our regional hub for Central Asia, from which we supply products to other countries such as Russia and Uzbekistan. Since the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic and through its highest peaks, despite the global and regional supply chain disruption, Santo has been supplying continuously essential medicines to the Kazakhstani healthcare system and to Kazakhstani patients. Our production lines were operating in three ships 24-7 for many months, from which we supply products. securing stable medicine supplies, such as life, working alongside the medical community to manage the pandemic crisis. But at the same time, we did everything to protect the health of our employees. We keep living in an insecure COVID pandemic situation, and already foresee developments across Europe and also in Kazakhstan of increasing focus by national governments to the local pharmaceutical industry as an in-house guarantor of national medicine security in all times. A strong national pharmaceutical industry is also a guarantor of socio-economic stability. A stable local pharma industry provides for job security. And there is a large contribution to taxes from both the company and its employees and the positive impact of the growing production and output in GDP. All are critical elements for a post-pandemic economic recovery. And our investment program commits the offtake contract with Kazakhstan Single Distributor SP Pharmacy. The continuity of offtake contract guarantees both sustainability of national pharma industry and continuity of investment security. Santo shares performance purpose, which is based on our innovation, excellence in operations, focus on quality and safety. And we continue to invest into the expansion and upgrade of our Santo facility. Into the transfer of intellectual property, know-how and advanced operational processes. Continuing development of Santo. Right, apologies for that. We uh, seem to have had some technical problem with the connection there. We do have the speakers here with us in Nur Sultan. We do have also so many speakers joining us online. And as you all know, the connection unfortunately is not always good. But thanks so much to Mr. Ziger if he can still hear me. And uh, thanks so much for participating. Uh, Sergei Kolesnikov, President at Tahna Nikol Group. Добрый день, уважаемый заместитель премьер-министра, 
Здравствуйте, уважаемые участники. Большое спасибо за предоставленное слово выступить на круглом столе. Я буду говорить по-русски. Группа «Технониколь» производит строительные материалы. Наша компания имеет большой опыт промышленных инвестиций. В группе состоит 57 предприятий. Мы расположены в семи странах мира. И наши продукции пользуются в 117 странах мира. Инвестиции в Республику Казахстан являются нашей неотъемлемой частью, нашей глобальной цели стать международной признанной компанией в области производства строительных материалов. И мы в течение нескольких вот месяцев приняли решение инвестировать в строительство двух предприятий по выпуску минеральной изоляции каменной ваты и экструзионного пенополистрола недалеко от города Алматы в предустроительной зоне Кайрат. Общая сумма инвестиций составит 7,8 миллиарда тенге. Это, о, извините, 45,5 миллиарда тенге. Это примерно больше 100 миллионов долларов. Одной из немного быстрорастущих отраслей Казахстана является строительство. Надо отметить, что темпы роста в последний год были около 11%. Это очень значимый рост. И, пожалуй, Казахстан является наиболее динамичным рынком строительства и, соответственно, очень быстро растет спрос на строительные материалы. И надо сказать, что в области каменной ваты 70% рынка Казахстана – это импорт, в основном импорт из России, в частности, от наших предприятий «Технониколь», расположенных в Российской Федерации. Поэтому приход наш в Казахстан является очень логичным шагом. Вся наша продукция, естественно, сертифицирована по требованиям законодательства Казахстана и соответствует их, всем их требованиям. Мы собираемся спустить завод по каменной вате в 2023 году, через полтора года. Завод по экструзионному пенополистролу в планах стоит 2024 год, но я почему-то уверен, что мы это сделаем раньше и запустим его в конце 2023 года. Продукцию мы собираемся продавать не только в Казахстане, но до 20-25% мы планируем поставлять на экспорт. Это в Западный Китай, это в Киргизию и в быстрорастущий Узбекистан. Наше новое производство обеспечит 220 рабочих мест высокопроизводительных с производительностью примерно 80 миллионов тенге. Это примерно 250-300 тысяч долларов на одного сотрудника. И надо сказать, что каждое рабочее место создает еще 4-5 рабочих мест в экономике республики, в области обслуживания оборудования, логистики, поставок упаковочных материалов и обслуживания оборудования. Заводы будут построены с использованием лучших европейских технологий. Это будут безопасные заводы с нулевым с рециклингом, то есть у нас будут нулевые выбросы по воде. У нас будет полная очистка ливневых стоков, система дожига отходящих газов. И все эти предприятия, мы недавно такой проект построили в Польше, выкраты. Так что проект в целом он удовлетворяет и европейским требованиям по безопасности и экологичности. Ну и разумеется, в рамках SLG завод будет оснащен самым высоким уровнем эффективности с точки зрения теплоизоляции, вентиляции использование светодиодных ламп, а также рекуперация тепла, которая вырабатывается в тепловых агрегатах. Мы очень надеемся на стабильность законодательных правил Республики Казахстан, и мы в этом убедились на протяжении многих лет работы в Казахстане. Продукт нашей компании известен хорошо, и, соответственно, ждем и приглашаем Уважаемый заместитель премьер-министра, в 2023 году надеюсь на впуск нашего предприятия. Большое спасибо за внимание. Сергей Колесников, спасибо. Thank you so much for this. Uh, we do have speakers, of course, uh, speaking different languages. The translation is available in four languages as well, so anybody could understand what's happening here. It's a bit of a mix, but that's the beauty of it, having all the investors from all these different countries represented at the round table. Uh, the next...
the uh, for your question. Yeah, actually, Kazakh Invest, uh, our main task is to, first of all, uh, attract foreign direct investment into the priority sectors in Kazakhstan. And at the same time, we uh, do provide comprehensive service to all investors that are coming to Kazakhstan. And actually, in our portfolio, we have um, uh, many projects that uh, across wide uh, uh, sectors, a wide variety of sectors like agriculture, uh, we have uh, projects in tourism, in logistics, petrochemicals, healthcare, um, pharmaceuticals, etc. But, uh, and this is because uh, the government has been doing a lot in terms of uh, uh, providing government incentives for investors. But uh, uh, in, in set, having said all that, I would like to underline that uh, uh, for, let's say, for agriculture, there is uh, a, an increased interest from, from the uh, investors and uh, in, in our portfolio, agricultural projects uh, see uh, a lot of or, or increased interest from, from, the, from the investors. And this is natural because Kazakhstan is among the top five countries globally in terms of highest uh, agriculture potential. And that's why we, we see this. And because of the COVID situation, again, uh, there is increased uh, uh, concern about food security. That's why we are seeing a lot of interest in the, in the agricultural projects. And uh, also besides, as uh, already it was mentioned here, uh, Kazakhstan has uh, a lot of uh, wind power potential as well as sun power potential or solar power potential. And that's why we, in this regard, we are seeing a lot of interest in terms of uh, renewable energy potential here in Kazakhstan. That's interesting. And also interesting how some of the interest, as you just said, is changing and switching to agriculture, for example, getting more track as using this momentum and this opportunity now. Yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we see this and actually because of the uh, incentives provided by the government, government support, uh, and uh, we see that the, 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 this is changing and the, uh, there is a lot of interest from the investor side, even local ones. So we are working on this and uh, of course our uh, main job is to help our investors and uh, make their journey, uh, investment journey here in Kazakhstan more comfortable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mejan Yusuf of CEO at Kazakh Invest. Thank you. For our next speaker, we wish he could be here with us, but we have the video address from him, Sir Suma Chakraborty, advisor to the President of Kazakhstan on Economic Development and Effective Governance. On the 30th anniversary of Kazakhstan's independence, I truly wish the people of Kazakhstan many, many more wonderful years ahead. Now, it's my real pleasure to speak at this annual roundtable. It's an important event dedicated to open discussions on the current state of the investment climate in Kazakhstan. Now, I've been actively working with Kazakhstan for a long, long time now, and I'm happy to witness Kazakhstan's progress during the last 30 years. Thanks to structural reform and great leadership, Kazakhstan was able to overcome the economic challenges and maintain an economic growth of 6.8% per year over the 2001-2016 period. And since 2005, the country's attracted foreign direct investment, FDI, worth nearly $350 billion. Now, over the last 30 years, Kazakhstan has substantially reduced poverty and transitioned from a low-income economy to an upper middle-income level. That's a wonderful achievement. But the world is now experiencing structural changes which carry new challenges that are interrelated and will impact the attractiveness of Kazakhstan for FDI. These challenges include, but not limited, to emerging importance of ESG principles, falling demand for fossil fuels, deglobalization, and falling global FDI. For example, according to UNCTAD, global FDI flows fell by 35% in 2020. Although that was mostly due to the pandemic, and the flows will rebound, I'm sure, in 2021, it's obvious that the competition for foreign capital is going to get much more difficult. There are also domestic challenges that Kazakhstan needs to address, especially in terms of slowing economic growth 
and too much concentration of FDI in natural resources. And these challenges simply mean that we've got to think and act differently. Kazakhstan is already implementing a wide set of measures to increase its competitiveness in terms of investment attraction. However, in my view, the country needs to double down on the efforts aimed at attracting investment to non-commodity and tradable sectors, including by the Astana International Financial Center, which has been a great success. We also need to have more effective implementation of investment projects and further enhance the rule of law. Now, I strongly believe that Kazakhstan is going to be able to address those challenges and adapt to the new reality, which will be creating new investment opportunities for the country. I truly believe so. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Sir Suma Shakraborty, advisor to the President of Kazakhstan on Economic Development. Great to hear from him as well. We hope next time he will be sitting here with us on stage, of course. Uh, I would like now to turn to Hussein Arslan, chairman at YDA Group. Thanks so much, Sir Suma. Thank you, Sasha. Yes, Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Excellencies and the Honorable Guests, I would like to start my speech by congratulating Kazakhstan for the 30th anniversary of the independence. And also, I would like to congratulate about the progress, what they have done within these last 30 years. It's really amazing. And also, I would like to thank you for giving me that opportunity to express my feelings. As YDA, we have been doing business in Kazakhstan more than 20 years. And Kazakhstan, as my being a Turkish businessman, is a really, uh, there is a really different place in my heart. Not only my heart, on our group, and also for many, many Turkish businessmen and for the Turkish government. Because as you know, we have a very uh, historical links, relations with Kazakhstan and all the CIS countries, and we improve this relationship, our brotherhood, to a good, great economical relations between those countries. Now, I'm proud to say that right now, each of the eight companies investing in Kazakhstan, one of them is a Turkish company. And now we have a business volume around $3.5 billion, and I believe that, strongly believe that it will be increased to $5 billion in the midterm and $10 billion in the long term. We have been doing business and investing in Kazakhstan, as I told you, the last 20 years, and right now uh, we, are, we are investing in the social infrastructural projects by means of the hospital healthcare PPP projects. We are the pioneering group for these healthcare projects. Kazakhstan has completed their macroeconomic planning, and right now they are giving importance to the social infrastructure, likewise the PPP projects for the healthcare and the education. As YDA, right now we are investing in four PPP hospitals, having a 3,000 beds and uh, almost an investment amount exceeding the $2 billion. And right now I'm proud to say that we have been uh, providing the opportunity for more than 2,500 job places, employment. And we hope that when we complete our hospitals and take into operation, Kazakhstan will have a great international standards modernized hospitals, and we will provide more than 10,000 job places. And Kazakhstan, as I told you, they have completed their strategic planning and they are ready for the 2050 vision. Kazakhstan's advantages, Kazakhstan is a very stable country, very sustainable country. Thanks for the strong leadership for Yelbashir Sultan Abiyevich Nazarbayev, Kasim Jomart, Tokayev, the president, always supportive and following the foreign investors. And for sure, the strong leadership for the Mr. Prime Minister, Askar Zakpayevich Mart. They are always supportive. You can always find a solution to your problems. And I'm happy to say that by the improvements of the structural reforms, right now Kazakhstan has jumped from 36th to 25th place in the world for the easiness of 
doing business. It's a great signal and I hope that they will be ranking in the upper places very soon. Many of our colleagues, our friends, has already mentioned about Astana Financial District and the advantages of Kazakhstan. That's why I don't want to repeat, but really, Astana Finan International Finance Center is a big advantage for us, for the international investors. Because they recognize the English law, where you can very rare to find in the other countries, and they follow up the international principles, and AIFC, by its own establishment, they have a constitutional status. It is highly important than giving confidence and safety for the foreign investors. Arbitration is another big advantage. But what is overall, what is overall? It is highly important that we have been investing for 20 years and I have never and ever been witnessed that Kazakhstan government has defaulted. It is highly important. They give confidence for the international investors. And for Kazakhstan, you can easily feel that investors' rights are always protected by the contract. And it is another important point I wanted to touch. When I compared with the progress for the last previous years, I'm happy to say that because still, unfortunately, I couldn't learn Russian. It's a very difficult language, but now I'm trying to learn Kazakh. It was not easy before communicating with the government agencies. There was not so much people, so many people speaking English. But right now, at least, at least at the manager levels, you can find everywhere, all the governmental agencies speaking fluent English and you can easily communicate and having a direct, constructive dialogue. Yes, by taking this opportunity, I would like to say that very few messages to the potential investors. As YDA, I remember that our first investment was 2001, and in 2007 we have invested in Aptau International Airport. There was not PPP law at that time, but thanks for the Kazakhstan's approach and their law, as I told you, constructive law, we invested the first non-carbon economy, the airport. And last year, during the COVID pandemic days, we invested in Turkistan International Airport. And I am proud to say that we have completed in, with the world track record, 11 months, design, finance, build, and operation. Even during the pandemic days, you can imagine, it could not be possible unless we would have a strong public support and the government support. Thank you very much again, and thank you very much to the team for Kazakh Invest, always supportive to the investors and to organizing such an event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hussein Arslan, Chairman and YDA Group. Uh, and thanks to all of the speakers who participated uh, and those online as well. Apologies that it happened this way with the connection. The teams are working and fixing this. But hearing all these stories during the round table, the first session, over the 30 years of success of investment in Kazakhstan, hearing all these stories here offline with the speakers on stage, hearing the stories online, and we do still have more stories online. It's truly a great proof of the progress, but also, as Mr. Oslan just said, it's also a message to potential investors for the next decades to come. Thank you so much, everybody here. Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, we're gonna proceed for a very special moment to the awards ceremony now. Please stay with us here. Хайрылкын, хайрылкын құрметті қанамдар мен мұрзалар. Сәрді Қазақстан Республикасы өкіметінің ағығымен өтетін Қазақстан Республикасы тәуелсіздігінің 30 жылдығына орай Қазақстан Республикасының сұртқы істер министерлігі 
Қазақ инвест ұлттық компаниясымен бірлестіп инвестициялық бенсенділік үшін шетелдік инвесторларды марапаттау рәсімде қарсалуға қуаныштымыз. Рұсат болса, салтанатты марапаттау рәсімін ашық деп жарелуға рұқсат етіңіздер. Long-term partnership awards, Chevron. Chevron, one of the first foreign investors in Kazakhstan, has almost 30 years of successful partnership with the country. Total direct payments from Tengiz Chevron amounts to over $158 billion. Узақ мерзімді ұнтымақтастық үшін Шеврон компаниясы мұрапатталады. Қошметтеріңіз. Узақ мерзімді ұнтымақтастық үшін Сити Банк компаниясы мұрапатталады. Сити Банк, a long-term partnership awards. Since 1994, Сити Банк has become one of the largest multinational investors in Kazakhstan and financed many strategically important projects across various industries. Ұзақ мерзімді ұнтымақтастық үшін. Congratulations. Қошым етіріңіз. Ұзақ мерзімді ұнтымақтастық үшін Анадолу Групп компаниясы мұрапатталады. Анадолу Групп, long-term partnership award. Анадолу Групп has been successfully partnering with Kazakhstan since 1994. Total investments of Anadolu Group in the economy already reached $704.9 million. Ұзақ мерзімді ұнтымақтасы үшін Филипп Морис Интернешнал компаниясы марапатталады. Long-term partnership awards for Philip Morris International. Philip Morris was one of the very first investors in Kazakhstan with total investment over the years amounting to over $530 million. Ұзақ мерзімді ұнтымақтастық үшін Степпі Семент компаниясы марапатталады. Степпі Семент, a long-term partnership award. Степпі Семент is the leading cement manufacturer in Kazakhstan. Since 1998, the company enjoys significant competitive advantages, being one of the lowest cost producers in Kazakhstan. Congratulations. Инвестициялық қызмет үшін Хэвел компаниясы марапатталады. Continuous Investment Value Award, Havel, Havel Group successfully implemented a number of renewable energy projects across various regions in Kazakhstan. Investitiyalı kizmet üşün Lotte Group kampanyası marbatalada. Continuous Investment Value Award, Lotte Group. Lotte Group successfully operates confectionery plants in Kazakhstan, currently implements expansion projects. Congratulations. Investitiyalı kizmet üşün, Ainex Capital kampanyası marabatalada. Continuous Investment Value Award, Ainex Capital. Hynox Capital has successfully launched feed production project in Kazakhstan and is currently seeking to invest in other sectors of the economy. Hynox Capital for a Continuous Investment Value Award. Investitiyal kizmet ışın, Georgian Industrial Group kampanyası marapatalada. 
Continuous Investment Value Award, Georgian Industrial Group. The Georgian Industrial Group manufactures agriculture equipment in Kazakhstan and is seeking to expand business operations in the country. Congratulations. Trochter Damushin, Total Energies Company, Samarbatada. Sustainability Award, Total Energies. Total Energies is a global multi-energy company and is a long-term large strategic investor in Kazakhstan with over $12 billion invested in the country. Congratulations. Trakta Damushin, any company is Marapatada. Sustainability Award, any. Badamsha Wind to Farm represents the first large scale investment by any in wind energy and the first step towards widespread use of renewable energy sources in the country. Trakta Damushin, Goldbeck Solar Company, Samarapatalada. Sustainability Award, Goldbeck Solar. Goldbeck Solar is the pioneer company in the installation of solar plants in Kazakhstan. The company started with the installation of the largest 100 megawatts solar power plant. Congratulations. <laughs> Innovation Award, the Linde Group. Linde Group is one of the leading providers of industrial and medical gases in Kazakhstan. Air Liquid Company Marbatalada. Innovation Award Air Liquid. Air Liquid successfully operates in Kazakhstan and supplies hydrogen and nitrogen to the major oil refineries in Kazakhstan. Agro Unirkasip Kishin Elevitin Damatura Koskan Lusushin Danon Company Marbatalada. Agribusiness Development Award Danon. Danon launched manufacturing operations in Kazakhstan back in 2010. Remarkably, 95% of milk used in production comes from the local market. Agro Unirkasip Kishinin Elevitin Damutura Koskan Elusushin, Lactalis Company Samarapatalada. Agribusiness Development Award Lactalis. The main objective of Lactalis in Kazakhstan is the stable development of the milk production. The company is a leader in the production of dairy products in Kazakhstan. Pharmaceutical Salazan Damodora Koskan Lissushin, Noble Pharmaceuticals Company, Samarapatalada. Pharmaceutical Industry Development Award, Noble Pharmaceuticals. Noble Pharmaceuticals is one of the leading manufacturers of pharmaceutical products in Kazakhstan with expansion of its activities in the CIS countries. Pharmaceutical Salazan Damotura Koskan Lissushin, Pol Pharma Company, Marapatalada. Pharmaceutical Industry Development Award, Pol Pharma. Pol Pharma is one of the leaders of the pharmaceutical market of Kazakhstan with over 240 generic drugs in various fields. Infrachrome Damotura Koskan Lusushin, YDA Holding Company Samarapatalada. Infrastructure Development Award, YDA Holding. YDA Holding had constructed modern air harbor in Kazakhstan. 
Turkestan International Airport and currently implements other infrastructure projects. Инфрақұрылымды дамытуға қосқан үлесі үшін ТАП Airports компаниясы марапатталады. Infrastructure Development Award TAV Airports. TAV Airports took over operations of Kazakhstan Main Aviation Getaway Almaty International Airport. Адами капиталды дамытуға қосқан үлесі үшін Thomas Education компаниясы марапатталады. Human Capital Development Award Thomas Education. Thomas Education is the largest network of private schools in Kazakhstan offering Cambridge Education Program. COVID-19 бен күресте қолда көрсеткен үшін шетелдік инвесторлардың қазақстандық кеңесі марапатталады. COVID-19 Response Award The Foreign Investors Council The special nomination COVID-19 Response Award aims to recognize and express appreciation to all the members of the Foreign Investor Council for the active support and their outstanding work in dealing with the pandemic in Kazakhstan. Saltanatta Sharamazan Rizmi Bulum Uzmaris Ne Jitta Barwa Konatarga Al Husmazda Aitkam Kiled. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all the nominees, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Mokhtar Tilabredi. Thank you so much. For everybody who is here with us offline, we're going to have a coffee break now before we are back with the next session at the Kazakhstan Global Investment Roundtable 20. 21 and if you are following online we have a special segment coming in just a moment those who live life undaunted. their abilities. Where sky is limitless. Waters are restless. Way 
of living is timeless. This is the way to the playgrounds of Kazakhstan. Investment Roundtable 2021. This year we are having a hybrid event in this format with the speakers online and offline. And some of them are joining us now, and they're among, of course, we're streaming everything that's happening here in North Sultan to more than a thousand participants from more than 50 countries. And now we have this special address by Julie Monaco, Managing Director, Global Head of Public Sector Coverage, Corporate and Investment Banking at Citigroup. Good afternoon, Your Excellency, Prime Minister. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, participants of the fourth Kazakhstan Global Investment Roundtable. My name is Julie Monaco, and I am Citigroup's Global Public Sector Head based in New York. I would like to begin by thanking you for the opportunity to congratulate His Excellency Oscar Maimin and the country with the 30th anniversary of independence. The last 30 years have been a fantastic journey for the Republic which has emerged to become one of the most developed countries in the Central Asia and the South Caucasus region and continues to grow and develop steadily. Citigroup has been represented in the Republic of Kazakhstan since 1994 and was among the first international banks to enter Kazakhstan market after the country announced its independence. We acknowledge the importance that foreign investment play in accelerating a country's growth and development and it's our utmost priority to continue accompanying Kazakhstan along your investment journey. As your strategic banking partner, our continued support of this agenda materializes in clearing, domestic exchange settlement, and cross-border capital origination services. In addition, City Kazakhstan has played a significant role in providing access for both public and corporate clients to the international capital markets. We're the only arranger that since 2014 has co-led all four international hard currency bond issuances by the Kazakhstan government. And we maintain the largest historical share in managing the cross-border debt of the domestic borrowers and issuers. Over the past 30 years, Kazakhstan has emerged as an economic and geopolitical success story, having tripled its GDP and attracted 350 billion worth of direct foreign investment with a plan to attract an additional 30 billion by 2025. Combined joint forces of His Excellency, the President, Prime Minister, and various ministries played a key role in establishing foreign capital enhancing institutions, councils and committees, including Cause Invest, Foreign Investors Council, Supreme Council for Reforms, Council for Improving the Investment Climate, or the Investment Ombudsman Institute, to name a few. Well-coordinated effort has borne fruit in attracting foreign investors, putting projects into operations and creating thousands of new job positions for Kazakhstani citizens. The currently ongoing implementation of measures aimed at promoting the transparency and predictability of investment policy are set to fuel the momentum of Kazakhstan's FDI takeoff. Kazakhstan's effort have been noticed and recognized by the international community when Kazakhstan ranked first in the world for cost effectiveness as a manufacturing location of the future. We are encouraged by the extent that the financial innovation, strategically designed business reforms, and established administrative bodies in charge of driving the seven priorities outlined in the National Development Plan. In addition to the aforementioned, investment incentives such as the creation of the Special Economic Zones and the Damu Entrepreneurship Development Fund aimed at stimulating the formation and economic growth of SMEs, equipped the country to succeed in attracting foreign capital, catalyzing the economic growth and national development. Furthermore, the government's goal to transition to a green economy by 2050 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2060 is a key factor in driving green, resilient, and inclusive growth. 
Kazakhstan is a leader in net FDI inflows among the CIS countries, as well as economies in transition, and continues to attract foreign investments. 3.9 billion of net FDI inflows in 2020 represented a billion dollar increase over 2019. And with net FDI of 2.6 of GDP, Kazakhstan indeed outperforms its neighbors and peers, including triple B rated sovereigns, where the median value for net FDI account for 2.4% of GDP. Kazakh Invest has been a key player in these developments by attracting foreign investment in priority sectors of the economy and providing a full range of services on the principle of a one-stop shop for supportive investment projects from idea to implementation. Moreover, great input to developing the investment environment is provided and coordinated in steady efforts of the Foreign Investors Council, where our Europe, Middle East, and Africa CEO David Livingston is a board member, and the Astana International Financial Center, which I am proudly a board member of. We are also present on the U.S.-Kazakhstan Business Council, and our chief country officer at City um, is on the board of the American Chamber of Commerce in, in Kazakhstan. We are very excited about the progress achieved up to date because for economic growth and development to happen, it is important that economies go beyond traditional bank lending as a way to attract foreign direct investment and foreign capital supporting growth of local companies. At Citi, we are very much proud to be a part of the investments that have happened over the last 30 years, and we very much look forward to witness and be part of Kazakhstan's promising future, where we will remain fully committed as an investor, a lender, and a trusted advisor. Thank you. We might be in Nur Sultan, but Kazakhstan Global Investment Roundtable 2021 is live truly across all the formats and all the countries. And our next speaker is Feng Shilai, Director and Chief Executive Officer of China Construction Bank International. Distinguished Deputy Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, climate change effects or the forecast of COP26 concluded in November and among the top risks by likelihood and impact in World Economic Forum survey in the last two years. We believe sustainability will be both an important challenge and opportunity for global economic transformation in the coming decade. Cooperation needs to focus not only on making economic benefits for the shareholders, but also on creating environmental, social, and governance value, or ESG, to all stakeholders. China is a supporter of sustainability and has a carbon neutrality target by 2016. Total related investment was estimated at over 20 trillion US dollars and provides ample opportunity to many investors. China Construction Bank with an MSCI ESG rating of A is active in China's ESG financing market in December 2019. It launched the CCB Match Plus, a smart platform to serve the real economy by providing enterprise with various opportunities globally for cooperation in different economic sectors in a preactive approach. The platform serves as a channel to boost connectivity and accessibility in and among countries along the best and the road initiatives, including Central Asian countries. CCB International, the investment banking arm of CCB in Hong Kong, has been making increasing efforts in ESG finance. We took an important role in the IPO of Ganfeng Li firm in Hong Kong in 2018 which is now the world's third largest leasing compound producer. In Hong Kong's IPO market, CCBI was ranked among the top five by number of projects in sponsors' role in 2014 to 2021. 
we shall make more effort in Hong Kong's growing green bond market and the ESG investment, contribute to assisting investors to participate in the world ESG financing market and sustainability development. Finally, I would like to thank the government of Kazakhstan and the Prime Minister Ma Ming for inviting me to this forum. And right before we are going to start our second session of Kazakhstan Global Investment Roundtable 2021, where we will be focusing on global economic transformation, we're going to hear now from Kush Choksi, Senior Vice President, International Development, U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Greetings from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Washington, D.C., to all our friends and business partners in Nur Sultan, as well as those attending virtually today. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce is home to the U.S. Kazakhstan Business Council, chaired by Shifra. I would like to send sincere regards and best wishes from the U.S. Chamber's President and CEO, Suzanne Clark, and thank Prime Minister Aska Mayen and Deputy Prime Minister, Foreign Minister of Kazakhstan, Mukhtar Tinurari. I would also like to thank the Kazakh Investment Chairman, uh, Yusupov, for convening today's forum. Congratulations to all of you on the 30th anniversary of Kazakhstan's independence. The global pandemic has created an unprecedented economic and health crisis for the world. While the rapid development and deployment of vaccines worldwide offers hope for a robust economic recovery in the United States and abroad, the pandemic has highlighted the need for strong U.S. leadership in the international state to reinvigorate growth, strengthen trade, and build resilient supply chains to support global recovery. Joining hands with our allies and partners like Kazakhstan is critical in building a better and more inclusive future creating healthier, more sustainable communities, supporting entrepreneurship, and expanding access to innovative technologies. In this regard, the U.S. Chamber applauds Kazakhstan's commercial diplomacy to facilitate trade through its leadership at World Trade Organization as co-host of the recent WTO Ministerial in Geneva. Bilaterally, U.S. companies constitute the largest investor base in Kazakhstan, and we are encouraged to see more U.S. companies in interested in doing business in Kazakhstan and utilizing Kazakhstan as a regional hub for Central Asia. U.S. companies are actively involved in diversifying Kazakhstan's economy, especially in strategic sectors such as agribusiness, logistics, financial services, as well as continued leadership in energy. Trade between the United States and Kazakhstan stands at approximately $2 billion per year, with ample room for growth in these sectors. Kazakhstan's role within the U.S. Central Asia C5 plus 1 dialogue and investment partnership with the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation are important anchors in U.S.-Kazakhstan commercial cooperation. Kazakhstan's Minister for Trade and National Integration, Sultanov, recently visited Washington with a multilateral and bilateral trade agenda. The U.S. Chamber's U.S.-Kazakhstan Business Council looked to advance our ties. I also know that we have a very vibrant American Chamber of Commerce in Kazakhstan, which plays an active role in supporting more than 700 American companies operating in Kazakhstan. U.S. businesses note Kazakhstan's progress enhancing its business climate, noted by World Bank rankings, and are actively involved in future reforms in dialogue with Kazakhstan officials. Opportunities for continued reforms, such as adopting international and industry standards, changes to environmental regulations, transparency and sanctity of contracts will grow the investment landscape in partnership with U.S. companies to support further diversification of Kazakhstan's economy. While growing the local economy, it is important to do so in a competitive manner building upon global supply value chains to create more export opportunities for Kazakh firms. 
Restricting localization or import substitution policies complicate continued trade and investment. Therefore, the U.S. Chamber and our U.S. Kazakhstan Business Council will continue to our advocacy for permanent, normal trade relations (PNTR) status with Kazakhstan to open further opportunities for collaboration in strategic sectors and two-way trade. In closing, I would like to reiterate the U.S. Chamber's commitment to your country and to your people to continue bilateral trade, supporting your recovery from COVID and our commitment to the next 30 years of U.S.-Kazakh relations. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce would like to thank everyone again on behalf of our U.S.-Kazakhstan Business Council for participating in today's discussion hosted by Kazakh Invest. We wish you success in the rest of the program and post-COVID. We plan to lead a U.S. business mission to Kazakhstan to meet with you in person. Thank you. Global Investment Roundtable 2021. And our next session on the program on our very busy and packed agenda is Global Economic Transformation, Challenges and Development Prospects in the Post-Pandemic Period. It is my great pleasure to invite here for the opening statement Almaz Aydarov, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. Please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank all the participants who take took part in person despite the pandemic time to achieve our capital and take it part of our events and greet to the online audience. Today, the entire world is going through a difficult and at the same time unique period of radical transformation of the economy and society. The sharp change in the conditions of the development of the global economy resulted from the pandemic has become an unprecedented threat to all countries, including Kazakhstan. The global lockdown has led to a steep and deep economic downturn in the modern history. Global competition for investment has been intensifying and countries are taking new steps and tools to attract investors. Last year, it's already highlighted today, Kazakhstan has lost uh, approximately 30% of foreign direct investment. And this year we see that we are almost returned to the 2019 figures and uh, the half year figures show us the growth to almost 30% plus. Uh, uh, our strategic goal is to increase the volume of volume, uh, foreign direct investment to $30 billion by 2025. This will ensure the level of investment in fixed assets at the level of 30% of GDP. The pandemic, along with the announced challenge, has uh, opened up many new business opportunities for us. Firstly, is the development of healthcare and pharmaceuticals. Last year, Kazakhstan launched the state program for the development of healthcare industry, under the which government plans to upgrade the hospital infrastructure by building large multi-specialty hospitals in all regions of the country, and the total amount is 20 hospitals. And uh, the local content for the uh, pharmaceutical production in Kazakhstan in the existing time is approximately 15%, and we are planning to reach by 2025 uh, something close to 50%. And uh, for these uh, targets, we little bit changed our legislation. And the main changes is that we now, for the local producers and uh, domestic producers, we are ready to provide long-term contracts, uh, off-take contracts, up to 10 years. Secondly, the development of dig digitalization and uh, ICT the introduction of digital technologies that allow the state, business, and society to interact effectively is becoming large scale and increasingly dynamic process. We have adopted the national project technological breakthroughs through the digitalization, science, and innovation. There are the international techno park of IT startups in Astana Hub, Park of Innovative Technology, Nazarbayev University. Also, national cluster of uh, artificial intelligence is being developed. Right now, we develop an innovative ecosystem for the implementation of research projects in the field of artificial intelligence, big data, and cybersecurity. We are interested in projects to create joint production of computer equipment, 
network equipment and data processing center. Kazakhstan is also working on the deployment of a 5G network. Thirdly, implementation of renewable energy projects. Today, is, uh, some speakers have already highlighted this theme. Uh, the development of alternative energy sources is gaining an irreversible global process. Low carbon development is one of the priorities of Kazakhstan. By 2030, we plan to increase the share of renewable energy sources in countries' energy balance from the current 3% to 15%. To do this, we provide comprehensive support and PPA contracts for 15 years. Current, uh, there are 124 renewable energy uh, facilities in Kazakhstan with the uh, installed capacity of over approximately 2 uh, GV. Hydrogen energy and the production of green hydrogen are also promising areas. Uh, the presence of vast territories in our country, uh, water resources, uh, the density of wind and sun allow us to claim uh, the role of major producer. And fourth, agriculture development. The industry is one of the strategic one of the economy of Kazakhstan and has a huge potential for further growth. Now, till the 2025, we have uh, around 3,000 projects generally in Kazakhstan, investment projects, and half of them in the agriculture sector now we see. And uh, the total area of agricultural land in Kazakhstan is over 200 million hectares, including almost 180 million hectares of uh, pastures. Uh, we offer foreign companies to consider participation in projects for production of meat, fruit, vegetables, grain, flour, butter, and other production in Kazakhstan. Uh, dear participants, I would like to emphasize once again that in the current conditions, Kazakhstan attached great importance to the work on attracting foreign investment and creating the most comfortable con conditions for foreign investors. I wish you all success and fruitful work. Thank you for your participation and thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. And thank you so much for this address and for setting the scene for this session where we're going to focus exactly on what you have just said about the challenges, but then also development prospects when it comes to investment in a post-pandemic period and in general in the context of global economic transformation. Now, uh, joining Almazid, our Deputy Foreign Minister of, of Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kazakhstan, here on stage are Alois Schonenberg, founder and board member at Paul Cotton. We have Hussein Ojan, Director, Kazakhstan EBRD. <laughs> Don and Derek, CEO, Orhun Medical. <laughs> and Vladislav Pastushenko, General Director, Kamlit KZ. Great to have you here with us on stage. We also do have speakers joining online. I'm going to introduce them. We will be joined by Jan van Tettering, Senior Vice President of Nokia, James John, Director of Investment and Enterprise Division, UNCTAD, William Thompson, Head of the Eurasia Division at the OECD, and Deepak Bagla, President at Piper and Managing Director and CEO, Invest India. And to uh, discuss a little bit more and to start with the prospects, we will hear now from Jan van Tettering, Senior Vice President at Nokia. Thank you and, uh, and hello to all our partners in, uh, and friends in Kyrgyzstan from Nokia. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has led to, to an extraordinary disruption across the world, impacting all aspects of our daily lives. But if there is one lesson learned, it's the lesson that communications infrastructure is a very critical infrastructure. Everyone, also beyond our industry, has understood how important world-class connectivity is in combating the impact of COVID. COVID is also the catalyst of faster rollout of high-speed connectivity and digital transformation in all areas. 5G and fiber combined with technologies like industrial IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and cloud together can deliver economic prosperity opportunity for all people and a healthier planet. 5G is a key enabling technology of the fourth industrial revolution. If we can accelerate 5G rollout globally, 
we will accelerate global economical growth. The World Economic Forum study estimates that 5G will add $13.2 trillion to the global economy by 2035, one third in manufacturing alone. But this is not just about productivity. Let me give you an example. Mining is one of the most dangerous industries in the world. More than half of the production sites of our customer Komatsu run automatic haulage vehicles on Nokia's private wireless technology. As a result, injuries from vehicle accidents have been eliminated. And a full truck, uh, sorry, and a full truck fleet can be monitored by a single controller, increasing productivity and efficiency. This is just one example, but there are numerous opportunities across all industries, rails, port, factories, cities, energy, you name it. In Kazakhstan, we are working with service providers as well as enterprises across industries on the way to digitalize and to have world-class connectivity. We are partnering with key stakeholders in Kazakhstan to create a digital economy and create new opportunities for economical growth across sectors and industries. By bringing together the collective intelligence of people, machines and devices, we can make the fourth industrial revolution a reality and address global challenges, like feeding a, grow, a growing population sustainably, like reducing carbon emissions and energy consumption. We can help the world to act together and create a global economy recovery for a post-pandemic world. Thank you. Thanks so much for this. And next here with us, I'm going to turn to Alois Schoenberger, founder and board member at Paul Cotton. Thank you very much for having me uh, invited to this uh, outstanding global economic roundtable. I just want to share my view briefly at the forum about the importance of the agriculture for a sustainable food supply. What does it mean? Particularly the pandemic was teaching us that local autark production is tremendously important based on supporting sustainable criteria. Therefore, our company, EcoInvest, decided, even before the pandemic already, to invest in Kazakhstan as a very agricultural-driven uh, country to support the transition of agriculture from the monoculture into more biodiversity, so the respecting uh, aspects of sustainability, which means for us, the first hand, to support the reduction, for instance, of water resources, to support the biodiversity, to support the renewable energy. And we decided to invest in uh, the one of the most modern technology in agriculture with uh, the greenhouses nowadays. We are succeeded the project during pandemic, and we saw how uh, important it is and decided further to increase it in order to allow that the food security is granted, giving stability, social, economical stability to the country. It allows as well to create high-tech jobs. At the end of the day, we are further understanding how important it is to uh, increase our effort to reduce as well the carbon footprint. I think this is the next uh, challenge which all countries facing, particularly Kazakhstan being a very strong player in agriculture, which can become and have a leading role in the long run, an advantage, a regional leader, by understanding that, supporting it, in order to increase their sustainable market share. It's a long transition, it is important, and therefore this panel particularly gives the chance 
the marketing to attract investors following projects based on sustainable criteria. I very much welcome everybody to follow and invite to do it because I see this is the way to go. This is the high-tech, data-driven uh, agriculture will, which in the long run increases the quality, leading, supporting organic production, but what's one of the most important thing to allow to create an affordable product. The product is not privileged for rich people, it's affordable for everybody with the last high tech and best quality. Therefore, I think this way is the right way to go. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And as you said, it's also about all of those key challenge that, challenges that are then, at the end of the day, becoming key prospects. And we're going to be now joined by James Chan, Director of Investment Enterprise Division at UN CTAD. He is joining us online. Congratulations on the 30th anniversary of the independence. Um, I wish to use my three minutes to talk about global investment prospects. First, we see the rapid business expansion. Overall, global demand is strong and supply chain needs huge capex, while such capital is cheap and abundant. So the global FDI prospects is now moving out of the shadow. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic slashed the global FDI by 35% to 1 trillion US dollars. And in 2021, global FDI has been rebouncing back, bouncing back at a pace that far exceeds expectations. In just the first half of this year, global FDI reached the three, uh, 852 billion US dollars, recovering over 70% of its lost ground. The UNCTAD data shows that FDI inflows to developed economies and middle income economies have surged by 130 percent respectively. Although this is led mainly by cross-border merger and acquisitions, the greenfield investment is expected to pick up at the beginning of next year. So multinational companies are now really shifting from sitting on their hands to grappling their shovel. Secondly, accelerated G, uh, global value chain reconfiguration. Global supply chains are now being restructured to, great re, to create resilience to the next shock, leading to massive re relocations of international production segments through diversification and the near soaring. And this is partly due to the lessons from the pandemic and partly due to the geopolitical rivalry. These large-scale adjustments to global production system will boost international capital flows and their new geographical patterns. The third feature is surging sustainability finance. The sustainability imperative is now effectively driving global finance and investment. The worldwide endeavors to address climate change and achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030 has significantly boosted the global demand for investment in green and the blue economies. The increasing call for higher environmental, social, and governance standards are pushing multinationals to transform their business models and operations towards sustainable development. This will also greatly boost global investment. According to our statistics, sustainability finance has reached 3.2 trillion US dollars. And even during the, financial, uh, the pandemic, 
it increased by 80%. Having said that, the risk and uncertainty remains high. So short term, the duration of the health crisis and the pace of vaccination, especially in developing countries, as well as the speed of implementation of infrastructure investment stimulus remain important factors of uncertainty. Other important risk factors, including labor and supply chain bottlenecks and energy prices and inflation pressure will also affect the final year's result. Longer term wise, we see the challenge of channeling investment into the SDG sectors remains big. In, in conclusion, FDI is on the trajectory of rapid recovery. Three mega trends are driving the speedy recovery, rapid business expansion, accelerated GDVC transformation, and sustainability imperative. Overall, we see that the investment climate in Kazakhstan has been favorable and continue to improve. The investment promotion agency in Kazakhstan has been among the advanced ones in the world. They perform exceedingly well and the FDI prospects for Kazakhstan will continue to be bright, both in short and the longer term. This is our assessment at the United Nations. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for your assessments. Indeed, uh, hardly anybody could uh, argue that they, what happened and the, the, the impact of 2020 when it comes to FDI and the economic activity has been massive, but also it's hard to argue that the rebound has been really, really impressive as well. Uh, we're gonna now go to William Thompson, head of the Eurasia Division at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And uh, thanks to the organizers for having me. Uh, I want to start by congratulating Kazakhstan on the 30th anniversary of its independence. And in my very limited time, I want to try and address actually uh, three uh, interlinked challenges in only three minutes, sustainability, infrastructure renewal, and inclusion. And what policy can do to ensure that this rhetoric of building back better leads to something real and not just empty words. Uh, the first point I would make in terms of what policy can do is that we have to get prices right. Uh, the market's not na magically going to solve our, our problems if we have the prices right, but real carbon pricing would reduce our reliance on top-down policy interventions and it would reduce the cost as well as increasing uh, the returns on any policy interventions we undertake uh, aiming at sustainability. We would get policy working with the market rather than against it. And the problem we have right now uh, is that carbon prices worldwide are a fraction of what they need to be. In the G20 area, they're about half what they ought to be if we were serious about delivering on the Paris goals. And in Kazakhstan, they're a small fraction of what they are even in the G20. So we have a long way to go. Second critical point is that there's been some OECD empirical work uh, recently on investment uh, and innovation for renewable energy in particular across 49 countries looking at over 70 explanatory variables. And the fundamental message that comes out, perhaps the most important message, is that basic framework conditions for investment are absolutely central. The ordinary meat and potatoes reform agenda retains all its urgency. Competition and open market entry, effective and consistent transparent regulation, effective dispute resolution, the integrity of the public administration, all of these issues are central uh, to any kind of, of activity in the green sectors we want to grow. And in fact, the evidence is very clear that non-extractive sectors are more sensitive to the overall business environment when it comes to uh, investment. So there's a lot to be done there in Kazakhstan in many countries. The government is working on many of these reforms. We need a sound business environment which will enhance the impact of policy interventions like feed-in tariffs and, and power purchase agreements. Finally, a word perhaps about infrastructure. Uh, OECD estimates that over the next 15 years, we need to spend 89 trillion in infrastructure, that's US dollars, across transport, energy, and water systems. 
That's even in a high carbon scenario. That is the high carbon figure. Uh, and it's about double what we're spending worldwide at present. So there's a big gap to fill. The good news is that moving to a low carbon uh, uh, scenario would only add about 4.5% to the total. So when we talk about the, the, the costs of greening our economies, we have to remember that in many cases, it's a marginal addition to what we have to do anyway to keep them running. And that's actually good news. Closing that gap is going to require a policy regime that establishes price incentives and policy investments, and that is stable. And it's also going to require us to overcome the significant financial and regulatory and structural constraints that we see for all traditional sources of financing for infrastructure. Uh, I'm running out of time. The task is enormous. We all know that. Uh, but so is the political will. We must do this. And certainly as we speak on the 30th anniversary of Kazakhstan's independence, I'm well aware that uh, the path from independence uh, to Kazakhstan's current development and prosperity was not an easy one. Uh, Kazakhstan mastered the challenges of the first generation of independence, and I think Kazakhstan, with the right choices and working with its partners, can master the challenges of the next. Thank you. Thanks so much, William Thompson, head of the Eurasia Division at the OECD. And I'm going to now turn to Hussein Ojan, director, Kazakhstan EBRD. Thank you, Sasha. Um, Dear Deputy Ministers, colleagues, and uh, valuable guests. It's, first of all, it's my pleasure uh, and honor to be here to address you this afternoon in this important Global Investment Roundtable 2021. And I would like to start by congratulating Kazakhstan for its 30th anniversary of independence. What Kazakhstan achieved in this past 30 years is truly remarkable. And as EBRD, we are indeed proud to support and to be a part of these achievements. COVID-19 pandemic has taught us many valuable lessons, both at micro, I mean individual, as well as the macro at the country levels. I'd like to commend government of Kazakhstan for their timely and effective response against the impact of the pandemic by introducing effective fiscal support measures. We forecast, we, I mean EBRD, forecast the Kazakh economy to expand by 3.6% in 2021 and 3.8% in 2022 on the back of the stronger external demand and the continued stimulus supporting domestic consumption. Given the limited time that uh, we have, I would like to focus on how Kazakhstan can build back better after the pandemic era. So the post-pandemic era, what can be done from our perspective? And I'm very happy to see that when I was listening to Deputy Minister and the focus areas that he um, indicated uh, are more or less in line with what we are thinking as well. So we, uh, so we are very happy um, to see and we stand ready to support. So, as also main, uh, many of the speakers have already pointed out, building a sustainable and welcoming investment climate for all investors, domestic and international, are certainly a prerequisite. However, I will focus on three main pillars in the post-pandemic era. Pillar number one, fostering private sector competitiveness and connectivity. How to carry this out? is by increased level of digitalization and innovation, embedding these two concepts into the diversification of the economy of Kazakhstan. Increased inbound FDI via the expertise as well as the standards, and also improved governance and skills, especially in the financial markets. Pillar number two, meticulously implementing the green carbon pathway to neutrality and climate resilience. I'm really happy that the, the, the previous speaker from a um, colleague from OECD has indicated about the carbon pricing and also the pathway to carbon neutrality. Kazakhstan has very high ambitious targets to be carbon neutral by 2060. 
And in order to achieve that, all of these necessary legislation, as well as the investments, need to be implemented um, meticulously to achieve it. Pillar number three. Oh, uh, before I go to pillar number three, I want to also indicate the three points within this green realm to be able to achieve that. That's through increasing of the renewable energy investments and installed capacity. Number two is the more decarbonized energy sector as a whole. And number three is improved resource efficiency and climate resilience across all sectors uh, in Kazakhstan. Pillar number three is promotion of economic inclusion and gender equality through private sector engagement. And in order to achieve this, introduction, and introduction of policies to increase access to employment and opportunities as well as skills. Improved access to finance for all and reduction of intra-regional disparities. In our opinion, in the medium term, implementation of these three pillars and the necessary legislation, policy engagement and uh, investments um, will help Kazakhstan to build back better in, in the post-pandemic era. And as EBRD, we stand ready to continue to support Kazakhstan in its endeavors to build back better in this era. And not only via our, our investments, but also again as the policy engagement and technical cooperation. Once again, I give my heartfelt congratulations to Kazakhstan as we celebrate 30 years of independence here. And I would like to thank you all for listening. Thanks so much, uh, and thanks for your message on building back better. This is very important, of course, when it comes to any rebound and any increase of the investment and spreading it. And next, I want to turn to you again, and Derek, CEO at Orun Medical. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, start my speech, of course, uh, with our brother and my second country, independence of 30 years of Kazakhstan. Uh, as Orum Medical, we are a company who is giving service in the healthcare field. And uh, as you know, we were the company who most knows about the uh, pandemic. Uh, to keep our, like, we, we had to keep our bottle uh, against oncology, diagnostic, treatment oncology. In terms of pandemic, it was really hard, actually, uh, because we we had to help people not being hospitalized and the demand of the people in the pandemic time was extreme and you have to maintain the same quality. And we also understood that our doctors also are humans and they can also get sick. Uh, it was uh, one of the challenges uh, we've been through uh, during the pandemic times. And also accomplishing the new projects, what we are uh, doing was very hard in pandemic time due to production uh, limit, limited, limited is and uh, due to manpower, lack of manpower. Uh, and of course, as every other sector was touched by the uh, logistic uh, problems. Uh, but we came to a part to reach uh, and we uh, managed in the pandemic time to finish uh, one top level oncology diagnostic and treatment center in Almaty. Uh, for future, uh, what we see that we all understood that needs of healthcare investment in Kazakhstan uh, will grow, uh, and we are ready uh, to do investment in that field. Uh, but investment is not the, uh, we, we believe as a company that investment, it's not the only uh, way to solve uh, the need. Uh, we need uh, doctors, uh, healthcare professionals who are working hands-on, uh, more practical work. Uh, so we uh, decided to invest uh, in a training university hospital, which will train doctors, healthcare professionals, uh, more hands-on, uh, more practical, uh, uh, practical works. Uh, that is why we are gonna uh, invest during next year, uh, A plus 
uh, quality private university hospital in Almaty. And I hope uh, after that uh, we will also bring uh, new projects in other uh, cities. Uh, I want to also thank, uh, while I was here during the pandemic time in Kazakhstan, uh, all the government uh, authorities to take uh, actions on time and to prevent people uh, of Kazakhstan uh, about the pandemic. Uh, today I would like to uh, address my uh, gratitude to Minister of Healthcare Kazakhstan, uh, Kazakh Embassy Turkey and Kazim West for giving us a chance to show our ability to serve Kazakh people with high standard of equipment, treatments, uh, facility for oncology. We believe that we need to extend uh, the investment in early cancer diagnostic uh, treatment centers over Kazakhstan. Uh, as company Orhun Medical, we are ready to share the experience, knowledge uh, uh, in Kazakhstan and extend this center more in public uh, and private uh, organizations, healthcare organizations. Uh, our main goal generally we need to uh, we need to change uh, the way that uh, people look in uh, med medical tourism in Kazakhstan. We don't wanna like we want Kazakhstan to reach a level that people here should not go to other countries to look for healthcare. They should stay here. They should get a very good healthcare service here without going anywhere. Plus, we wanna make Kazakhstan the center of CII, uh, CIS countries, as a uh, center of uh, medical tourism. We want to attract more people from other CIS countries, and we want to make Kazakhstan center of the CIS country, countries in terms of healthcare services. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's really great to get your view and your perspective on such an important issue. Thanks so much for sharing it. And we're going to be now joined online by Deepak Bagla, President, WIPA and Managing Director and CEO, Invest India. Uh, good evening from New Delhi and good evening from Invest India. Excellencies, dignitaries, captains of business, first I must thank Kazakh Invest for getting us all together. And I think the topic you've chosen is extremely timely. And before I say anything else, I must compliment the entire team at Kazakh Invest. We've been working very closely with them for the past few years. And I've seen the professionalism, the enthusiasm in the team. And I guess that is getting reflected in the level of opportunity and the interest which the global community is looking at for investments in Kazakhstan. And there, let me pick up from where my friend James left off. A very encouraging statement, James, that we are seeing the global investment community and go back into their wallets and trying to start spending it. And we are seeing cross-border investments coming up. That's a very important sign. And we require it. But yes, the past 20 months have been very brutal. They've changed the lives of each one of us, and not just individually with our families, but we as countries and together as the world, as a society. And I think there are certain things which have come out very clearly, which this little virus has taught us. And each one of you has alluded to it, so I'm going to repeat it. The first is growth has to be with equity. It cannot be a portrait. Growth has to be a landscape. And that means partnerships are going to be very, very critical. Partnerships, maybe they're in smaller groups of synergy, or in larger groups. But we have to relook at this new world as we move into this new world with a mind that we have to work together in partnerships to take it forward. Absolutely an imperative. The second, which is what I heard everyone say, and I believe in it very, sustainability is no longer a choice. It's an imperative. And it's no longer something which is at the sides of the room, but today it is in the center of the room. And I like the initiatives which Antad has taken and OECD and each one of us, where we are now going to start rating investments and projects 
on the level of sustainability on that. And I think what was very encouraging of what we heard in Glasgow, at least we have a roadmap and we have more and more of us together who are holding hands as we move on this journey towards the roadmap. Roadmaps are critical. They help us get milestones. Milestones are critical because they help consensus and creation of policy. And I think we are now headed in that direction. And the good thing is that each and every stakeholder, that means not us, but our children, and everybody else are now stakeholders in this entire journey. But let me now take it to the other elements which I think are going to be defining the new world as we move beyond this pandemic. James mentioned about supply chains moving. They will. I'm already seeing it happening in India. I'm seeing it happening across my friends in Wiper. We hear of supply chains moving to places where they are sustainable, with sustainable investment. We are also looking at supply chains moving to places where the markets are talking about disruptions in there. And we are also talk, looking at supply chains becoming shorter. The moment supply chains become shorter, there is a clear emphasis on the mid-market, the smaller companies, coming up and growing faster. And that is, again, we have to join hands together to create best practices, not just for where they already are, but where they ought to be and where they are needed. And the most important thing as we move out of this with those partnerships is going to be a new pace of change. A pace of change which is going to be led by innovation, a complete disruption in the way business is done, be it industry or manufacturing 4.0 or 5.0. We heard about communication. We heard about a new world order in the world of business, developing out of a new pace of change based on a pillar of innovation. And innovation does not see boundaries. Innovation works across boundaries, and innovation works in partnerships. I know these are general statements, but these are now critical. And not just for me at Invest India, where we stand by them, but even on the platform of WIPA, where all of us are now looking forward to create a new plan where we can work together to create that new world order. Thank you very much for inviting me, and thank you very much, and I wish the very best to all of you and your deliberation. Thank you, Sasha. Back to you. Thank you so much, Deepak Bogla, President of WIPA and Managing Director and CEO at Invest India. Great to have you here with us online. And also now, I want to turn to Vladislav Pastushenko, General Director at Camelit KZ, who is here with us on stage. Dear colleagues, I'm really proud to be here uh, and speak on this uh, investment forum uh, to the 30 years of independence. If I think on these 30 last years, I see a real transition we made together from the uh, Soviet uh, non-market uh, uh, production to market situation. It was difficult years. I'm working now uh, for the biggest Russian truck manufacturer. And, uh, I can say it's uh, the biggest truck manufacturer in the post-Soviet uh, area as, at, at the same time. And we were able, in these years, really to find real partners abroad, to bring technology home, to minimize our cost, to make us more effective, and to go ahead. And you are asking now, what are you doing here? Yes. Our last project is that we came to Kazakhstan, and we see uh, the investment climate now is so far that uh, uh, it, it's now really interesting to invest in Kazakhstan. We're investing big money in Kazakhstan. We're building two big factories. And it's not the factories where you only screw something home and sell. It's a real high technology product that we are developing new product together with European companies. Okay, we are working together with engineering companies from Europe. We are uh, developing new production, and this new production will be put now in Costa Line. It's not a big city, but an important city on the way from 
Russia to uh, to Kazakhstan, and uh, we are really satisfied with this relation and uh, very uh, thankful to the government of Kazakhstan that made it possible. Um, and uh, it's not easy way. Uh, we are, see us as pioneers in this way that uh, we are going to invest in uh, uh, such uh, high sophisticated uh, production. Um, but we are really sure that we can manage it together. And the biggest point here is that we uh, see Kazakhstan as a reliable partner. We see people here that can manage it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for, for, for being here and for your message. And with this, uh, it, it's really great to have this unique perspective from everybody joining here offline and online as well on look, uh, you know, at, at looking at the 30 years and the, the lessons and the success and the achievements of the 30 years because effectively this is what matters to building up the success over the upcoming decades. And it's only on this base and found that we can do that. Thank you so much to all the speakers. It was great having you here. Thanks a lot to all the online speakers. Thank you. And we're going to have a very special moment here with Almas Aitar, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. We do have one award still here in our hands and we're going to be very happy now to introduce it again continuous investment value award inex capital inex capital has successfully launched feed production project in kazakhstan and is currently seeking to invest in other sectors of the economy inex capital continuous investment value award Congratulations. Thank you so much, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. There was, there was, what a great moment to wrap up this second session as well. And now, after the two sessions, it's not done. We're going to be having and heading next on our agenda the signing ceremony. Dear Excellencies, dear ladies and gentlemen, let us start the signing ceremony of the fourth Kazakhstan Global Investment Roundtable. The first document to be signed is the agreement on the basic principles of cooperation for implementation of project creation of a production and logistics base at the Aktau Seaport Special Economic Zone between Sovereign Wealth Fund Samruk Kazina and Eurasia Supply Chain Aktau, please. Give your applause. Thank you. The following document is the investment contract signed between the Primakus and the Investment Committee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Kazakhstan on the construction of a complex for production of broiler meat
Аплодисменты. The following signing of a memorandum on the project for construction of a plan for production of thermal insulation materials. We invite Kazakh Invest National Company and Techno Nicole. Thank you. Hereby, we invite the Akimat of East Kazakhstan region and Yildirim Group to sign the Memorandum of Cooperation on construction of a mining processing plant, a plan for production of high carbon ferrochrome. We invite Dolce Group and M3 Group to sign the Memorandum of Cooperation on the construction of a plan for the production of no woven fabric, clothes, and syringes. Please. Thank you. Wonderful. The following document is the Memorandum of Understanding on the construction of a second stage of industrial greenhouses between Akimat of Turkestan region and Paul Katong. Please give your applause. The next document is the memorandum 
of cooperation between Kazakh and West National Company and International Center for the Development of Oil and Gas Industry. Please. Thank you. We invite Kazakh Invest National Company and Atasu Group to sign the Memorandum of Cooperation on the implementation of an investment project in the field of transport and logistics. We invite Kazakh Innovation University and China Machinery Engineering Corporation to sign the agreement on cooperation to promote the implementation of the project for the construction of the university clinic for 1,000 beds and clinical diagnostic center. Your warm applause. We invite Kazakh Invest National Company and IRS Steel to sign the Memorandum of Cooperation on the implementation of the project for the construction of a metallurgical plant. The next document is the Memorandum of Cooperation on the implementation of the investment project in the field of healthcare between Kazakh Invest National Company and Orhun Medical. The floor is yours.
Laws, please. We invite Orbis Machinery and Artel to sign a memorandum of joint implementation of the project for the construction of a plant for production of kitchen stoves. The floor is yours, please. Thank you. The following document is the memorandum of understanding between Akimat of Akmal region and Unicorn Houndings on the construction of a feed mill, poultry farm, and pig breeding complex. We invite Akimat of Akmola region and Burabai Biogas Fertilizers Factory to sign the memorandum on the implementation of biogas plant and production of organic fertilizers. The next to be signed is the cooperation agreement between Kazakh Invest National Company and Kosil Limited on the construction of a smart shopping and office residential complex, Freedom Builders Horgos. Thank you. Please give a warm applause. <laughs> Kazakh Invest National Company and Nikhil Paslan Mas are invited for the signing of memorandum for cooperation for the construction plant for the stainless steel products in Almaty.
The next signing is between Talas Investment Company and China Tianjin Engineering Corporation on the construction of the second stage of a sodium cyanide plant in Jambul region. Thank you. We invite BioVet and Beijing Zhongke Jin for the signing of a founding agreement on the implementation of a smart veterinary project and the production of livestock vaccines. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Now, memorandum on the implementation of the project planned for the production of ceramic tiles and ceramic products will be signed between Akimat of Aktobi region and Zerde Ceramics Aktobi. The next document to be signed is the memorandum on the implementation of the project for the construction of a cement plant between Akimat of Aktobi region and Aktobi Tsem. For the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding on the promotion of Kazakhstan chemical projects, we invite Kazakh Invest National Company and Kaz Kim Pram. The next document is the memorandum on the implementation of the project between Akimat of North Kazakhstan region and Northern Playwood Mill on the construction of a chipboard plant.
For the following signing of the memorandum of cooperation on the implementation of the ferroalloy plant construction project, we invite Taras Industrial Zone and TB Alloys Kazakh Limited. Your warm applause. The next trilateral document is a memorandum of cooperation for the implementation of the project Tourist and Recreational Complex Kaskasu between the Development Bank of Kazakhstan, Kaskasu Resort, and YDA in Chad. Please give your warm applause. No. One more. And finally, your warm applause. Thank you. The next document to be signed is a trilateral memorandum on joint implementation of the investment projects between Kazakh Invest National Company, Baladne Company, and Agro Holding Dinara Group.
Please give your applause. Congratulations. We invite Kazakh Invest National Company, BI Group, and Power International Holding to sign the trilateral memorandum on joint implementation of investment projects. Thank you. And the next document to be signed is trilateral memorandum within the framework of cooperation on the implementation of investment projects in the field of transport and tourism on roadside service between Kazakh Invest, Kazakh Tourism, and Kaz Avtozol. Congratulations. And finally, last but not the least, is the Memorandum of Cooperation between Kazakh Invest National Company and Ecocultural Eurasia on construction of industrial greenhouses in Turkestan region. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation and your attention. The signing ceremony of Kazakhstan Global Investment Roundtable is over. Thank you very much.